friends, welcome to another reading vlog. We're in my bathroom today because I need to film. I woke up late and I still need to trim my bangs. Um, so I figured you guys can hang out with me while I talk about the books I'm reading, the books I read this week, the books, plural. Who do I think I am? Single book. I read a single book this week. Um, but while I trim my hair. So this is going to be a disaster. Oh my god, what's happening? Send help. This is already not going well. My god, I should just not be allowed to cut my hair or do anything to my hair. Is that centered? I guess it kind of is. Okay, whatever. I'm not actually cutting hair. I'm just cutting into thin air. This is why I don't cut wispy bangs. You know what? Fuck it. We're gonna do a quick... Oh no, what a disaster. Who let me cut my own hair? Mistakes have been made. Hello friends. So here we are with the, I, I ended up just like chopping it back to baby bangs just to salvage it because it looked truly like shit. And then I put on a bold lip to detract from the fact that my bangs are shit. I hate my life. Why do I do this to myself? Why? 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 Why do I do this? Why do I do this? Anyway, let's talk about the books I'm reading because I didn't actually talk about them very well um, in, in the bathroom clips. Yesterday I finished The Bone Shard Daughter um, and it's kind of put me, it, I didn't love the book. I gave it a three stars. I thought it was solid. I thought it was good, but I didn't think, uh, I just felt like it wasn't for me um, personally. Um, there were certain things that I didn't like about it. Um, but overall, I think it's a solid fantasy and it actually has like put me back into the mood for fantasy. So I am grateful for that. Hi, Kava. Are you going to say hi? And then I ended up um, picking back up the Obelisk Gate last night um, because I feel like my brain cells have also kind of returned a little bit, semi-returned. Fingers crossed, let's not jinx it. Um, but I do want to dive into this because I just want, I want something that will blow my mind. And I just know that N.K. Jemisin will do that. I have faith. I, ha I believe in her. Just based on the way that the fifth season ended, I just know that Obelisk Gate will be just as explosive at the end. Um, not explosive. It's hard to explain. So like with the fifth season, I love it. It's probably one of my favorite books of the year, um, depending on like which of the three books I like the best. But so, like definitely like a new favorite series for me. Um, but the thing is like, I don't feel particularly attached to any of the characters. I don't particularly like any of them. I'm not particularly like invested in any of them. And I feel like the plot is also like quite slow. There's not too much plot going on. That being said, it's just like, it's truly just such a unique world. And it is a story and I've never experienced anything like it. I feel like usually it either falls into like, very plot heavy, um, or very character heavy and like the fifth season truly is like a world building heavy book and I loved it. I loved it. Um, and anyway, so the Obelisk Gate, I'm reading that again. I read about 20 pages last night. The thing I don't, one thing I don't like about um, the Obelisk Gate, which I didn't feel as much with fifth season, um, is that the chapters are really long. It's not that I don't like long chapters. I'm not like I'm not as particular about it, I think, as most people, but I think because it's so dense, the long chapters make it even harder to kind of like absorb the information for me. So anyway, that's just like my one brain cell not being able to comprehend. That's not like a mark against the book. Um, the other book I'm reading currently is Rosewater by Taddy Thompson. Um, I'm behind on my buddy read with Elena and Kay. They've both read, I think, 50 pages, maybe 100 by now, but I'm going to be catching up this weekend or trying to. Um, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to try not to be more than one day behind them because <laughs> um, I'm a shit buddy reader. I'm the worst buddy reader. Like I always say I'm going to buddy read with people and then like I because I'm such a mood reader, I'm like the worst buddy reader. Um, so apologies in advance to anyone I promised to buddy read with. Um, this is your disclaimer and this is your warning to get out while you still can. I kind of want to go on a walk for today because like I just haven't moved at all and I can like I can feel my body like shutting down. Um, my back has been hurting a lot more. Um, I have like chronic back pain and like if I don't exercise, <laughs> which is like never, but when I don't exercise it gets 
worse. I have this like fine line between exercising enough and exercising too much. Um, and I definitely haven't been exercising like at all. So um, I might go for a walk today. We'll see, we'll see how hot it is. I just, this is the thing, I don't like warm weather and I don't like people. So there might not be too many people in the cemetery today. Maybe I'll walk there. Anyway, that's a long enough check-in. Um, the hair, a disaster, but it's fine. It'll grow out in like a couple of weeks, it's fine. Anyway, I'm gonna go film now um, and then probably read a little bit. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go film now and I will check in a bit later. Hello friends, a quick little update. Not much to update to be honest. I barely moved from this spot, honestly. Um, I haven't read too much. I read a bit of Rosewater. Honestly, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna keep reading though. I'm gonna keep powering through because I have heard that it is a very confusing book. It's very weird. Um, so I'm gonna keep reading, keep powering on. I think Kay and Elena are not enjoying it that much. They're a little bit ahead of me. I think I'm at the, uh, where am I now? I'm 12% in, which means I am like where I was supposed to be yesterday, I think. So I'm only one day behind, I think. So I'm gonna try to catch up on this in the next like hour or and a half or so. And then tonight I'm gonna go all in and focus on Obelisk Gate tonight. Um, I only have like, honestly, I don't have that much left. I have less than 200 pages left of this, so. Um, I am hopeful to finish this. Maybe not this weekend, but like early next week. Um, Cause this does take me a longer time to read cause I do make quite a few notes um, in it. So anyway, I just went to the store, bought myself some snacky snack, got myself some queso. I have some chips from before. What even is health? I don't know. Somebody tell me because I have no idea. Um, anyway, I will keep you guys posted. Um, I'll probably do a quick check in either at the end of the night or maybe after I finish my pages for Rosewater. And yeah, oh my god. So my e-reader has, I kind of stopped using it for a while um, when I wasn't really reading much, um, but I've started using it a lot more recently, obviously, because I've been reading a lot more. And I don't know if it's just like because it's so old, um, it's really started like lagging. So I've been like looking into getting a new one. I really want a new one, but I'm also like, I don't want to buy it full price, but I'm also like, who knows when it's going to go on sale. It's in my cart currently. I just haven't checked out yet. We're one foot in, if that makes sense. Anyway, actually I'm probably going to watch a little bit of TV before I read this, but anyway. I don't know why I did that check-in. There was really nothing I have to say about this other than I'm so confused at what's happening all the time. So um, I am glad I'm buddy reading it because I like literally was like, I don't understand what's happening. Anyway, I will check in a little bit later and see you then. Hello friends. It is currently midnight. Um, I ended up, I just finished um, a impromptu like reading sprint live show situation with Taylor from Made Between the Pages. Um, if you joined us, thank you for joining us. It was fun. I read a lot. I'm pretty happy with what I read today. If you can hear the air fryer, it's because I decided I was going to make myself chicken nuggets to treat myself as like a midnight snack, you know, just a few chicken nuggets, whatever. Um, but I read quite a bit today, so I am caught up on the buddy read. I'm 100 pages um, slash 25% of the way into uh, Rosewater right now. Do I understand any of it? No, I don't think I have enough brain cells for that book, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna power through. Um, I am slightly interested in it. I'm, I'm following along a lip like better on the present day timeline for that. The flashbacks are like a huge blur for me. I don't really understand any of what's going on. Um, and the time jumps and the time kind of like going back and forth is kind of really confusing to me. Um, I'm like, I'm struggling to keep track of what time frame we're in, but I also made a pretty good dent in Obelisk 8 so far, um, during the reading sprint. So I'm currently on page 293, which is about a hundred pages from the end. Um, so I'm pretty confident I can finish this tomorrow. So I'm, I'm really, really excited because I've been reading this since like July or June even. So, um, I'm really excited to finally finish this. Things are starting to really pick up. Um in terms of the plot. I think the first half of the book was just really 
info heavy, like really world building heavy. And it was a little info dumpy and I was really struggling to kind of like retain all the information. But right now in kind of like the second half of the book, we're getting more plot, more stuff happening um, rather than just like learning about the extensions for the world. Um, so shit is going down. I am loving it. I'm probably going to read a little bit more of this tonight. And then tomorrow morning, I am going to sit out on the balcony and try to read as much as I can um, before I go to my parents' house tomorrow. So um, I'm probably not going to check in again tonight. I will probably just check in with you guys tomorrow morning and let you know how much, if anything, if, if I read more or, or if I don't. So good night and I will see you tomorrow morning. Morning, friends. I am looking like a disaster child right now. Um, I had set my alarm to wake up a little bit earlier so that I could finish Obelisk Gate because I think I'm about an hour and a half from being done. Alas, I slept through my alarm and now I'm like in a rush. I'm like late to go to my parents' house. It's, it's a freaking disaster. Anyway, I do have it with me though in my little book sleeve, which I made myself. I'm really proud of it. The fabric's not pretty, but like whatever. Um, <laughs> Basically, I was like, I don't want to pay $20 for a book sleeve. So I just bought some fabric and some fabric glue. Made myself a little book sleeve. Um, anyway, I am going to be listening to my audiobook in the car ride there and back. Hopefully, I'll get a pretty decent dent in that. And then, yeah, and then I'll come back. I'll finish Obelisk Gate, and then I will catch up on my buddy read of Rosewater. That's the plan. It's an ambitious plan. I also have some stuff I have to do for a readathon that I'm co-hosting in October. So... Uh, I need to do that today as well. <laughs> a disaster. Today's a disaster. I wanted to wake up early, but look at where we are now. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, I will check in a little bit later. Somebody take my goddamn credit card away from me because... I bought it. Um, I'm pretty happy with this decision though. Like I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed because I thought about buying it for when it was on sale during the Father's Day sale. Um, but I had convinced myself not to buy it because I was like, I don't need it. My old one still works. But it's quite quickly like deteriorated um, since then in the last couple of months. Maybe it's just because I've been using it a lot more the last few months as well. It now like lags a lot. It glitches quite a bit. So um, I'm pretty happy to have a new one. Um, I've had the old one since I was like 20 as well. So like I've had it for almost eight years now. So I'm not like, you know, too mad about it. I did get the, I did splurge for the one with buttons and this is waterproof. So um, not that I take baths. I don't know why that's a selling point for me, but, <laughs> but you know, um, I'm really, really excited about this. I'm excited to charge it and use it tonight. Um, and actually have like Wi-Fi connection. So mine doesn't actually connect to the store. So you can't actually, like I can't get my purchases on my Kobo without plugging it in. Um, so, and also this has overdrive integration, which means I can get my Libby books through here. So I'm really, really excited for this. I've been listening to my audiobook for a while. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Um, contemplating getting a physical copy of that as well, just to like highlight and annotate because it is just so good. Um, it's, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, a lot of it is just kind of like reaffirming things that I know, but like putting them into like more concrete facts, whether, rather than just like things that I feel personally. Um, so I've been really enjoying that. Um, and there's just some quotes that like really hit hard. Um, I really think I'm going to talk about it more in my wrap up, I think. Um, but I really, really, I'm really enjoying that. Um, and the psychology stuff is really interesting too. Um, so anyway. I will check in a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go home and I'm going to read Obelisk Gate. I'm going to fingers crossed finish Obelisk Gate. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you posted. Hello, friends. It is currently lunchtime on Tuesday. I went to collect my clips for this weekend vlog and I realized I didn't film the conclusion. Outro? Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Standard. Are we even surprised at this point? I actually had a pretty decent reading weekend, I feel like. Um, sorry for the glare on my glasses because like this is like my work setup and it's like so on Friday 
I finished The Bone Shard Daughter, which technically wasn't part of this vlog, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. The, I finished The T Bone Shard Daughter. I liked it. I gave it three stars. I thought it was a solid debut. It was good, but it wasn't great. I felt like there was so much potential. I really liked the world. I just, the narrative choices didn't vibe with me. Um, and I found it difficult to connect with the characters, which for me is like a bit of a deal breaker because... Typically speaking, obviously there's exceptions. So if I don't connect with the character, I find it difficult to fully, fully enjoy a story. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really solid. I think if you are more of a plot-based reader, you would probably enjoy it way more than I did. For a debut SFF epic series, I think it's very, very good. Like if you didn't tell me it was Andrea Stewart's like debut novel, I probably would not have guessed that. Um, it's, the world is very intricate and I think it is very interesting. The magic system is really cool. It's kind of like, it's like bone shard magic. So in this world, like every citizen has to contribute like a shard of their bone, like at the base of their skull or like behind their ear or something like that. The bone is used to um, essentially create these like chimera type creatures. Um, and then when your bone gets used, it's like siphons the life force out of you until you eventually die. Um, so it's a very interesting, it's a pretty grim magic system. I like it. But yeah, like I said, the narrative choices just weren't for me. It's a multi POV. There's like four POVs plus a interlude kind of POV. So technically like five POVs. And two out of the five are in first person, past tense, which for me, it didn't work. Like I didn't need it to be first person. I didn't feel like it contributed much to the story. I really felt like it should have just been in third person because it wasn't, it's not like it was like first person present tense or anything where it was like, it served a purpose to the story. I felt personally, my personal opinion, I just struggle sometimes with multi POV when they're in first person because most situations where I've read that, it's hard to distinguish between the voices. And I think in this book, it definitely ran into that issue a little bit, so. And then after that, I did start, okay, I did start Rosewater. I got 25% of the way in. I don't know if I'm gonna continue, to be quite honest, because I just don't feel like I'm smart enough to understand it. Or I might come back to it once I'm a little bit more well-read in sci-fi. I just, right now, I have no idea what's going on. I'm like a hundred pages in and I have zero clue. Like I'm literally so confused. Um, and I just don't feel like I'm going to be doing the book justice if I read it now. Um, so I might DNF it honestly, just cause I'm too dumb. I know that Carl, like the main character whose POV it's told from, I know you're not supposed to like him. I know he's insufferable and he is like a terrible, he's almost like an anti-hero kind of character misogyny is a little a touch too much a touch touch too much um there's like this weird fixation on like genitals and boobs and I'm just like I get the dude is supposed to suck but like must we I don't know um again that's not even like the main problem I've read other books that have misogyny in them you know that but I think the main thing is that I just I truly just have no idea what's happening um Kay and Elena both have read to at least the halfway point and both of them are like it's still confusing it still doesn't make any sense and the plot only starts halfway through I just feel like right now it's not the book for me so I might dnf that um but I'll keep you posted on that if I actually DNF or not. So I decided to pick the Obelisk Gate back up. I ended up finishing it. I had half of the book left to go. Um, and so I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. Well, N.K. Jemisin is a genius, a genius, a god, if you will. Um, but, <laughs> but the fifth season just set the bar really, really high. I think the first half of the Obelisk Gate was just a little slower in terms of pacing and also it was a little more info dumpy than the first book I felt so I I struggled kind of with the first half of the book but the second half of the book was phenomenal like if you've read the fifth season like similar kind of like twists and turns just like hits she just hits you in the face with like the good stuff I don't know it, just, it was really good um I don't think I'm emotionally ready for the stone sky yet <laughs> I need to reset a little bit. As of the ending, I have absolutely no idea where the stone sky is gonna go. Like, uh, I'm scared. I'm scared. 
I have a lot of fun reading these because like I, I really enjoy tabbing them. Oh, my God, N.K. Jemison, This is my new religion. Honestly, um, if you haven't read the Bro Broken Earth trilogy yet, um, I highly recommend it. I know I haven't finished it yet, but I highly recommend it. It's like truly like if you are looking for something that is truly unlike anything you've ever read, like this is the most unique world the most unique writing system the voice is so unique um when I was saying before like usually not connecting with characters is a deal breaker for me this is not the case in the Broken Earth trilogy I don't particularly like connect with any of the characters um and the plot is kind of slow as well so it's not even like a plot driven story but like this is like very much a world driven story and the world is just so fascinating and it's very theme driven so in the second book um, you still have the themes of racism, so I don't know if you can see, but like my orange tabs are racism, my green tabs are environmentalism, and in book two we really hit a little bit more of the environmentalist themes. Um, but I just like, I love the way that N.K. Jemisin's writing matches with the themes, and like the way she describes things, she always uses like very geological um, and environmental like descriptions even to describe things that are not environmental like and I just think it works so well and it's just like genius it's just pure genius yeah I just love this book um I'm excited to get to the stone sky I think it's actually like even shorter than this book like I think the books progressively get smaller which is kind of unusual I feel like for a, se a series typically speaking yeah I'm not ready for it yet emotionally like it is emotionally a lot because she puts you through a lot like honestly I just, yeah. Anyway, a four out of five stars only because the first half was just a little bit slow and a little bit um, not as good. Like, it's just like if this season is five stars, this can't be a five star either. Like, maybe I'll bump it up to a 4.5 star. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, that was the second book I finished this weekend. I finished this on, I think, Sunday. And then right after that, I really wanted to read a novella. Like, I was in, in, in a mood for a novella, which never happens. Um, so I started um, The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nivo. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I finished it yesterday, so I finished on Monday after work. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It is unexpectedly one of my favorite books of the year. Um, <laughs> like... Who even am I? A novella? My favorite book? Like, what is happening? Um, but it is just so beautiful. I don't want to tell you too much about it because I think I went into it pretty blind. So I think for me, I think that was the perfect way to go into it. Um, in terms of like what I loved about it is the writing style is beautiful. Um, and it's just it's it's kind of told as like a story in a story. You all know that's kind of like one of my favorite tropes. I love that kind of storytelling style. So you kind of flip between third person like present day and then the person telling the story is telling it in first person um but the writing style is so beautiful and it's like it's almost poetic and lyrical um but it's not uh difficult to understand like I find sometimes if it's too pro like if it's too poetic and too lyrical it can be like a little difficult to understand what's happening um and that's not the case here it's just a really I don't know I don't know how to explain it but by the end you're like so invested in these characters even though it's only 100 pages you get really invested really quickly but like nothing explosive ever happens and yet like throughout the story everything just kind of like simmers like it's everything's a soft simmer it's just so good like I can't I can't rave about it enough um I put in a request on NetGalley for the second novella in this world. It's like se technically second in the series, but it is a standalone. Like they're not super related. Like the main character, like the person who is the scribe, who is like writing down and documenting the story, that's the same person. They're, I guess, documenting another story in the second book. Um, but it's so good. And by the end, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Um, I'm definitely going to be re reading this again to really comb through now that I know like the ending and the story and everything. If I had to explain what I love about it, A, the writing style is amazing. And again, it's just like, it's like that soft simmering. And it's like, it's a story about anger, but like a very quiet type of anger. And it's a very unexpected story. And it's just so, I don't even know. Um, there's like a subtle sapphic relationship. Um, the main character, so like the, the clerk, cleric? I don't even know how to pronounce it, but the person who's like the scribe who writes the stories, they are non-binary. Um, you have a talking bird. I'm like, what's not to love? I just, I can't rave about this novella enough. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I've already like raved about this. I, 
I just, it was such an unexpected uh, thing because I, I really was just like, oh, I just want a novella as like a palate cleanser, just kind of like meh, meh, meh. Uh, <laughs> but this is definitely probably one of my favorite books of the year. This is now an auto buy author for me. Like the writing is so beautiful. I've already pre-ordered When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. I'm ready for it. I think their full first full length novel is coming out next year and it's a Great Gatsby retelling. I am ready. Not that I've ever read Great Gatsby. I have no interest in Great Gatsby, but I will read this retelling like nobody's been business and I will prep for it by reading the spark notes of Great Gatsby. But anyway, I finished that yesterday and then now I'm currently reading um, my arc for the Silvered Serpents. I am about halfway through, so um, I will keep you guys posted on that. I don't know if it'll take me like until the next weekend to read it. Um, so I don't know if it'll be featured in a vlog or anything, but I'll definitely inc include it in my wrap up. Also update on, um, why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? I'm about 80% of the way through now. Um, so I think I'm, I'm so close to being done. It is so interesting. Like, it's just so good. I think it's a, it's a really, if you read White Fragility and you thought, this is all really basic stuff. I want to know a little bit more. I want to dive a little bit deeper. I really think this is the book. Like, I honestly, I'm going to talk about it more in my wrap up, obviously, but uh, once I finish it, but like the, I really think all white people should read this. Just saying, just saying. For me personally, this is why I really like this book is that like, there are things that you experience and there are things that you feel, but sometimes in the greater world, people tell you you're thinking too much and that's, that like not everything is about race and they kind of like gaslight you into thinking racism is not a factor. Um, and this book is like, talks about obviously like the psychology of everything. And so it's like, it is like, it is real. It's like confirming to you that what you experience and what you feel is real. It's just a very validating book, you know, like not, I don't think anything in here other than like the actual like historical facts. Like they talk about, there's one chapter where they talk about like immigration patterns in America. And it's like so interesting. And, like, I obviously, like, don't live in America, so I don't know much about, like, immigration patterns and shit. But, like, it's fast, fascinating. Fascinating. Um, um, but, yeah, it's just, like, a very validating book. Um, and also very educational as well. Like, again, I don't know much about psychology, so I've learned a little bit about, like, developmental psychology and the role that plays on, like, young people's minds. Um, but also how that extends into your adult life as well and how you kind of like reshape your identity as an adult. And I think it's so, uh, I just, I just really like it. I really like it. I highly recommend the audiobook if you're able to enjoy it because it is a longer, um, nonfiction book. If you're white, I really think I highly recommend it because I think I, I mean, I DNF'd White Fragility halfway through because I was really was just like, I'm not learning anything from this. I'm going to move on to another book. Um, but I really think it is more educational, um, and more practical than white fragility. Like it really informs you like how you can move forward and how you can, as a white person, navigate spaces in a more racially conscious way. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. She has a whole chapter on like whiteness as a racial identity. Um, and essentially how it's like, it, because it's the norm, white people don't learn to like develop their racial identity. So then as adults, they don't know how to talk about race because they've never had to talk about race. And it's fascinating shit. Um, anyway, I've like rambled long enough. I'm looking at this now. This is like a 20 minute wrap up. Um, hopefully I'll be able to cut it down. But um, <laughs> this is it for this weekend's vlog. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books, especially, especially The Empress of Salt and Fortune. I am looking for fellow lovers of this book because let me tell you, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. And like nobody on my timeline has read it. And let's just, I need to know. I need to know if you're out there. Um, anyway. If you like this video and you want to see more from me, please hit the subscribe button. I upload every Thursdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. EST. Um, and yeah, that's it for this weekend, today, whatever. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.